Hi, I'm Lee. Welcome to the channel. I hope you're having a lovely day. I'm a short, overweight, middle-aged white dude. I've got thinning brown hair under a cocky hat. I'm wearing black glasses. I'm wearing a blue t-shirt. And I'm standing with my lovely friend Mark here in front of an electric DeLorean. So, Mark, welcome. Thank you very much, Lee. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to let people know as well. I'm a tallish... Uh, Nordic descent uh, middle-aged man with a, not much more hair than you and mostly at the back in a ponytail and uh, I'm wearing my DeLorean outfit to uh, to celebrate the day as well. Awesome. Mark, so tell me how you're connected to this car. Uh, I got a cold call from Che, uh, the filmmaker, uh, in relation to converting a DeLorean. Che Baker, yes. Uh, and, uh, I took it with a grain of salt. Hey, what do you feel about doing a, a charging a changing a DeLorean over to electric? I went good, but I'll believe it when I see it. And I'm, so you are what? Why did he call you? Uh, my company is Electric Vehicles Canberra. We predominantly put in charging stations, but we also work on the batteries for cars, and we also do conversions whenever they come across. Awesome. So. What what okay? What's the process of converting? I mean, obviously the DeLorean, but just in general, what's what's the process? So in a nutshell, uh, this is a rear engine car. So we ripped the engine out. We left the gearbox attached even. Uh, so took it right out of the back of the car. That left us with a lovely big space to try and fill with. First of all, the motor. So we've put a Tesla Motor S model in it, a small rear unit. Uh, it's about 200 kilowatts. We'll probably get a little bit less than that because we had to also maximise the amount of space that we have for batteries. So we've used uh, about 300 volts worth of batteries. Those batteries will probably give us somewhere between 100 and 150 kilowatts. Um, so find the space, put the motor in. The motor sits between the back wheels. Um, once. Once that was in, we could say, well, where are we going to put all of these batteries? We debated about putting them in the front and in the back, and it, it ended up being about 200 kilos more heavy to put them in the back. So we just went, look, let's just get them all in the back now, keep it simple, get it all done, and um, you know, get the car so we can bring it to events like this. Cool. And now I understand it's not 100% finished yet, but when it is finished and completely operational, what kind of specs and range and stuff like that are you going to get out of it? We're expecting about 200 kilometres, um, so it's a it's a 40 kilowatt hour pack, or as I like to think of it, it's about two Nissan Leaf packs, and the early Nissan Leaf got about 100 kilometres. So that's where that's where we're getting that sort of um, measurements from. Uh, not to 100, probably. You know, let's let's. I'd rather not sound like I'm boasting and then get shown up. Yeah. So I'd say probably six to eight second naught to 100. Uh, I did give it, so it, was, it had its maiden voyage yesterday. And um, because it's not completely finished, we had a few technical issues, but I did get the opportunity because we were entering into traffic to just give it a little bit. And it was enough for me to go, yeah, this car's gonna go. You know, it, and of course, what happens when it gets up to 88 miles an hour? It, it won't. We promised, we promised both Che and uh, Matthew Riley, the owner of the car, we're going to limit it to 140 k's, which is just underneath 88 miles an hour. The speedo doesn't go up to 88 anyway. So, you know, I, if I'm going to break the speed limit, which I don't endorse, I want to know what I'm doing. So we've, we've kind of gone, no, let's well, let's limit it at 140 k's an hour. That's, that's plenty fast for me. Yeah, nice. Um, what else can you tell me in terms of... I mean, I suppose with everything else, otherwise you just, you just it's just a normal car. It, it's a bog standard DeLorean. Um, we're probably considering, certainly the, the, the first thing we've got to do once we get it back is to start putting the charging, the battery charger in. It's not in at the moment. We literally jury rigged, and, you know, put a couple of wires in, hooked it up to a power point with a battery charger in the middle and charged up the battery to make sure we had enough range and stuff for here. 
the the charging port i'm going to put a type 2 at the back probably underneath the number plate and then the original fueling port is underneath the bonnet so we thought that's a little bit inconvenient for everyday use uh, instead we might uh, we might put a ccs2 there instead so that when you pull up to a um, when, when you pull up to a charging station you're going to have to open up the bonnet and plug it in now what kind of uh, charging rate are you getting like on ac and dc charge what kind of speeds do you think you'll get uh, i'm not 100 percent certain about the dc probably uh, uh, look, uh, there's a C rating on the batteries. That would be the best way to work it out. Uh, DC charging is really limited by uh, the size of the charger, obviously, but also what the batteries can handle. And it's their ability to dissipate heat. So the DC charging is a little bit uh, hard to predict. The AC charging, we're putting a, a four kilowatt charger in it for now. We'll probably look at expanding on that later on. Um, we might go with four kilowatts for single phase and then up to 16, 12 or 16 for three phase. And was there anything about the fact that it's a DeLorean, did that make any elements of it easier or more difficult to do the conversion? Uh, the rear end engine bay made it probably a little bit easier. The thing that made this car mostly a, a bit more difficult is that um, Che used it for a movie called Blue World Order, and I, I'm going to blame... Any... Available on iTunes and in other places, yes, go it check is. it out, yeah, it's a good yeah. movie. It's, it's a great movie, especially for local Canberrans, because there's a lot of train spotting in there. That's, that's what I particularly enjoy about the movie. and. Um, so it's, they did a car chase across Lake George, so that rattled the windows and the mirrors off and when we opened it up, sorry, when we opened it up, we, we ended up with about two bucketfuls of dirt, and mostly in our eyes, but um, so that, that I, I, I noticed there's some duct tape on that mirror over there. Yeah, 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 that's... Again, I blame Lake George. <laughs> right. and, and look, you know, that, that's some cred. It, it's, it not only did a, um, a race across Lake George, but it had uh, six other DeLoreans chasing after it as part of the show. So, you know, Very cool. it, 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 it's, it's got some good history about it. Um, as far as the DeLorean bit, the only other things that are probably challenging is getting in and out of it. It's a sports car. It doesn't suit a big guy like me. When I've closed the, the, the door to, to drive it yesterday, I hit my head. Um, and there is, I've tried to put the seat back and all of that. It, it's a very tight fit. But hey, it's a DeLorean. It's a DeLorean. You, know, you can be uncomfortable if you're driving such a cool car. Um, the other thing that would be a challenge is yeah, the things like the doors and all of that sort of stuff. But it, it's not overly um, uh, an issue and with um, like is it one pedal driving Does it have oh, definitely definitely we we haven't fully tested the brakes which is good because the regen is really good okay that's good cool uh, the other the other challenge that we've had is it was an auto so we've just at the moment just got the gear lever flapping around there We'll probably put some switches in, but at the moment, it, it, the um, uh, the motor controller connects to the to the vehicle, and uh, so you turn it on like like the normal car with a key. But it's got an added security feature that you need an iPad that's paired with the motor to to get it to run. So at the moment. You, you, we put it into drive using an iPad. It's a big key to carry around. It is a big key to carry around. So hence, we'll probably put some buttons in. But uh, and and look, it, it concerns me a little bit that there's just this tablet sitting in the middle of the car with, uh, you know, it's only one passenger at least. But you want to trust them a little bit so that they don't hit reverse while you're driving along or something. Right. Okay. Cool. Um, anything else? that you can tell me that I haven't asked about? Um, well, look, I really like the batteries. I'm going to give a plug to Lithium Power over in WA. The, the cells, so I'll, I'll take a step back and I'll explain our language that we sort of put together uh, and, it, and it lines up with technical language. So if you get two bits of metal and put an electrolyte between them, you have a cell. Then what we bought from Lithium Power was 12 cells in a battery, and that's all self-contained, which is what I really love about it. And then, of course, we put the 20 of the batteries together to make a pack. 
Uh, what I particularly like about these ones is that all that BMS wiring and everything, all we needed to do was put a plug in and connect the plug from the battery to the BMS. So that was all uh, very much plug and play. It's a, it's a fabulous setup. And then on top of that, the, the batteries themselves bolt onto a cooling plate. You can bolt either one just on top or you can bolt them in between. And that cooling plate forms the structure of the battery. And then on top of that, we've, we've run liquid through it so that we can keep the batteries cool as well. Awesome. Well, Mark, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate oh, no. it. Thank you very and, much. And um, I hope that was useful. I hope that was interesting for you. If you have enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much for your support. And we'll uh, catch you on the next one. Safe and happy driving. And what kind of um, guy was standing right in front of us? I'll, I'll, I'll play some B-roll over that, hopefully. Um, <laughs> hi, I'm Lee. Welcome to the channel. I hope you're having a lovely day. I'm a short, overweight, middle-aged white dude. I've got thinning brown hair under a hat. No, I'm wearing a hat. I'm not going to say thinning brown hair. <laughs> I'm not even... Wait, should I just... Yeah, I'm not too squinty. We know that they were really hoping oh. to be back up there again. <laughs> now you're being okay, great. Okay, yeah, no, oh, no, no, that, that's, that, no, that, 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 that's silly. That's silly. That's yeah. silly.